Hey there, spooky friends. I know I am not the voice you are used to hearing to start these episodes, but I wanted to give you a quick programming note. Uh, so we are going to be playing the 192nd episode of Storytime, which we recorded about two or three weeks ago. Uh, we've kind of had this in the can. We've been deciding to hang on to it in case we needed a week off. And guess what? This week, we are going to push the episode back just a day because Robin was out of town for a convention uh, and she was traveling all day on Monday. So we didn't want to stay up super late. Uh, so we said, hey, let's record Tuesday. Today hit, which is Tuesday. And we said, we're still incredibly tired. We have a million things to do in our personal lives and for our big kid jobs, our capital W work jobs. Uh, and then at the end of the night, I was like, you know what? We still have the story time episode. Let's run that and get some rest because we don't want to take another hiatus because we get burnt out. And everyone was so supportive when we did that and said, you guys take time when you need it. We will understand, but we still want to make sure that we have some content. So uh, this is the story time number 192, uh, and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, in case you all haven't noticed, the Bloodlines episodes are releasing every other week because it is a very intense edit. And we are going to be wrapping up those very soon with the first group and moving on to the next part of the storyline with new people, except Robin will still be in there. So uh, those are all the programming notes I have for you. I'm going to turn it over to Robin in the past. So uh, take it away, past Robin. Hey there, spooky friends, and welcome to a late night episode of Storytime. Woo! My voice is shot. This live recording is much later than we usually do for story time. We won't get done until like 10, which is weird. Um, but yeah, I think this is our first story story time in a while. So welcome back to uh, some stories that people have shared with us, some homegrown horrors, if you will. Uh, Adam, why don't you uh, tell us all what those are? So homegrown horrors are the stories that the wonderful listeners like yourself uh, and viewers like those joining us live right now have sent to us. And it's either something that's happened to them a friend or a family member or just a story that they have heard that they believe to be true. Uh, and if they have a story like that, it's usually supernatural, spiritual, coincidental, true crime, extraterrestrial, uh, and sometimes about their pets, uh, like Trauma Time was this past week. <laughs> trauma uh, Time, If yeah. people have a story like that, Robin, uh, where can they send it? You can send it to our email, storytime at scaryish.com. You can also send it to us through social media. We also have a website, scaryish.com. We know it's a little out of date. <laughs> <laughs> but you can still go to the uh, very out of date, but you can still go to the contact us page, fill out the contact us page, um, and it'll send us an email that way. So there's a bunch of ways to reach out to us and share your stories with us. Um, and we would love to share it with the rest of the spooky fam. So it's pretty cool. Indeed. So if you have a story, please reach out. We would be more than happy to share it on the show. Uh, so yeah, like Robin said, this is the first uh, story time we've had, I think in about like two or three weeks. And we're going to be going at that cadence basically, uh, and unless we like get a bunch of emails that come in. Uh, anytime soon. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes because I'm actually really having a good time uh, doing the Bloodlines campaign that we're running right now. And it's super fun to edit. And I think it's going really well. And uh, shout out to uh, Captain Fake Eye. Shout out to Ben. Shout out to Robin, of course. And shout out to Garrett uh, for doing such a good job uh, being the players for that while I'm trying to do my best as I DM. But right on. All right. So uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is read four stories. We have two mediums, a short and a long uh, so I think we're going to go, I think we discussed this before the show, we're going to do short, medium, long, medium. Is that what we decided on? Yeah. All right, cool. Yes. So I think mine is the short one. Yeah. So I just said that and uh, I was correct in that. Uh, so <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and get us started here with the first story. Uh, and this one is from Aries over there on Instagram. And it goes a little something like this. Hello. 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 I just have a super short little story for the pod. So right. back in December, a few friends and I were taking a trip up to Flagstaff from Phoenix, Arizona. We were staying at my friend's childhood home, her parents' vacation home now. And since we were all... and we were, How do you write that on a... It's just a bunch of text. L's. Yeah, it's weird. L R L R L R. Uh, and since we were all playing straw together, we had a bit of spooky mood going. For those of you who don't know, I'm pretty sure this is referring to uh, Strahd, which is a bad guy in Dungeons and Dragons. Go figure. Uh, and it's like oh, a pre-done campaign okay, okay. about a vampire. Um, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so I figured I'd explain that. So they're doing like a vampire Dungeons and Dragons thing, and they have this spooky mood going on. The email continues. One of my friends joked about the house being haunted because it's pretty old and everything creaks. I mean, I'm not haunted, and I'm pretty old and everything on me creaks, but anyways... I don't know what it was about the house, but it definitely gave me a super uneasy vibe. I don't know if Would it you was... say it's the heebie-jeebies? Wow. I mean, I think that's like 
next level uneasy vibe. Like super uneasy, then heebie-jeebie after that. So <laughs> I don't know if it was my friends constantly joking or what, but later that night, something super creepy happened. I was falling asleep in the room I was staying in alone, and just as I was, just as I was in that weird state between awake and asleep, the one that makes you jump up if you're having a falling dream, I simultaneously heard a deep, visceral, demonic voice saying, leave now, and jolted up on the bed a bit. My brain still isn't sure if I heard the voice in like a dream or in real life. Normally, I'm a very big skeptic, so I'm going to keep telling myself it was all a dream. It's just odd since I don't have dreams very often, and if I do, I can never remember them. But this voice that I heard was clear as day. Anyways, hope that you all are well. Can't wait for the upcoming D&D game you guys are doing. At this point, we've already released two episodes, so I hope you're enjoying it. But We hope you you enjoy the D&D game we've put out. Thank you so much for saying that in areas. I will say, too, like, uh, I didn't used to have trouble falling asleep. Like, it was one of my many talents. I could just fall asleep on the spot wherever I was. Um, and if I was just slightly tired, it would just happen. Nowadays though, when I get into the state you're describing where you're like just about to fall asleep, I don't know why, but I start jolting awake. And, uh, sometimes it doesn't happen at all. And sometimes I just can't get myself to fall asleep because my body keeps like jolting awake. I think it's this weird fear that like, if I fall asleep, I'm going to die, which is the feeling that I have when I'm in sleep paralysis. So that's kind of carried over into that state that you're talking about here. So, uh, I would definitely be really creeped out if I started hearing like deep demonic voices in that state too, because I'd be like, nope, fuck this. Let me do go drink a bottle of NyQuil and then see if I can fall asleep. But uh, also, I don't recommend drinking a bottle of NyQuil unless you're looking for the long sleep, which I don't think any of us are. So thank you for that. <laughs> no problem. And thank you, Aries, for your story. <laughs> All right. So my next story here is uh, called Prophetic Snake Dream, and uh, it's from Lewis. It goes, hi, Adam and Robin. Hello, I'm Robin. That's Adam. Hello. We're a thing. This is a thing. This is our episode. We do every <laughs> This you know, is our episode. Okay. None of the other ones were ours. Uh, I'm Lewis. Hello, hi. Lewis. I've been listening for three months or so now, and I have binged, and I mean binged, your perfect spooky show. Aww. I already feel part of the show, and I guess writing in is part of that initiation. So... I'm listening to Pasta Time, episode 34, and I heard you were low on stories. We're always low on stories. Everybody send in your stories. If you're listening to the story right now, we're low. All right. So, even having a chance to feature on the show is exciting to me. Well, be excited. You're featured on the show. This is what happens. Story Time, episode 192, all about Lewis. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't that be crazy if we, like, did a background check and was like, let us tell you all about Lewis. All right. I'm writing this at 3 a.m. on a dark night. Okay, it's kind of starting to get light already, but that's Scotland in the summer for you. Sunlight nearly 24-7, which is funny because I was talking to my boss today and he was telling me about Alaska in the summer. And in the summer in Alaska, it's like daytime all day. And I was just mind blown because I can't imagine it being, you know, middle of the night and the sun is still up. It just blows my mind. Uh, Anyway. (laughs) Gotta get those blackout curtains. I mean, in the winter, they have 30 days of night, right? They have a full month where the sun doesn't come up um, in that Is same it? area. And uh, that's where... I can't do that either. That's the I basis need... of that Josh Hartnett. I'm pretty sure it's Josh Hartnett vampire movie where the vampires go to that town to take it over because they can just be outside for like 30 straight days. I just know that Josh Hartnett is in the faculty. <laughs> I just know that Josh Hartnett is in Lucky Number 40 11. Days and 40 Nights. I think it's called Lucky Number Eleven, which is an awesome fucking. Oh movie. yeah, that one too. That, movie that is one's a good great. movie. Great. If you've never seen Lucky Number Eleven, go ahead and watch that. You will love it. He's in Pearl Harbor. That's the first time I ever saw Josh Hartnett, and I was like mm, in love. I've never <laughs> seen Pearl Harbor. Uh, it is historically inaccurate. I've heard the only thing worse pleasure. than the movie Pearl Harbor was the actual Pearl Harbor, and that is by a short margin. So it's supposed to be that bad. But again, <laughs> that's I, oh I didn't. I wasn't there for either. So that's just what I've heard. Anyway, continuing on. So, sorry, long Lewis. Story. My bad with that detour, dog. <laughs> so, Let's get back to your story. So long story long, this happened a month ago. I've had some somewhat prophetic dreams before, but this might top them all. I'd been excited to meet up with this girl. I know, shocking to me too. <laughs> and I had a dream the night before that she was going to cancel, which I found odd because she had no reason not to. I woke up the next day to, you're gonna hate me as a text, and my heart shattered at 9 a.m. on a sunny Tuesday morning. We'd scheduled to meet again later in the week, so I sleep the night before our meeting again, and this time my dream is different. In my dream, I stood in my living room with a jar on the table. 
I go to open it and snakes come out. But weirdly, the one I pick up, God knows why I picked one up, has two heads, like in a sort of Y shape, not (laughs) two-ended. Imagine a snake that just has a head on one end and a head on the (laughs) other end, and it's just like, no matter what end you look at, it's going to bite you. Anyway, so I wake up in fright and check my phone. Now, in school, I studied psychology, and I wanted to know the latent content of my dream, so I Google two-headed snake dream meaning and was baffled that this was a dream people actually had it listed reasons like a warning from others or making a choice between two things it also listed a different meaning of holding the two-headed snake itself stating that i needed to see something from someone else's perspective Hmm. so i wondered all morning what this dream could mean I'm a big Pokemon fan, and I was excited for the new trailer, and the box legendaries were surprisingly announced. Want to guess what the two Pokemon are? Two snakes. Wait, which Pokemon has two snakes? Yeah, I'm confused as well. I must have missed an announcement. Oh, maybe it's the new one. There's the new Pokemon. um, Vermilion. Is it Vermilion? Violet. It's Violet and... uh, I just saw it today. I want to pre-order Violet because it's the pretty snake. Um, violet and whatever the fucking other color. Is. Huh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it is two new, the two new games coming out are two snakes. Yes, I know that. I just saw it today. I was going to pre order it. Anyway, I was beyond freaked out. I showed my brother my search history to prove I s- researched it before the trailer came out. Only. You must have really wanted someone to believe you because I'm not showing anyone my fucking search history. <laughs> he, he, they literally put in there. Only time he's seeing my search history. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, So anyway, I start to get ready to meet this girl, finally, when I receive another text saying she can't make it. Poor me, I know. I'm not coming up with some imagery for how broken my heart was this time. I guess another meaning for the dream would be that she snaked me, quote-unquote snaked, me twice, and that she was two-faced. If you're curious as to how the romantic side ends, instead of giving up, I messaged a girl and was like, look, you're going on holiday for about a month, I really would rather we meet up beforehand. So she agrees to another quote-unquote date, and no points for guessing what her answer was this time. Well, who needs love when you have the scariest podcast? To add to the snake commotion, I went to a gig the day after being canceled on last minute for a third time, and on the way down the staircase to the parking lot, there was a weird scraped marking on the way, like some of the paint had come off. It was a sort of sideways S, which just looked like a two-ended, two-headed snake. What the fuck? (laughs) So I'm officially scared of snakes or obsessed with them. I'm not sure yet. Another quick bonus for y'all happened a few years ago. I was walking downstairs to my bathroom, which has no light leading into it and no windows inside it. And my house is pretty dark, so sometimes I walk into the door thinking it's open, and sometimes I go to grab a handle that's not there. If that's, uh, it's that dark of a room. So I was about to go in the bathroom and nobody was downstairs at the time. And I heard pots and pans and water running and splashing coming from the bathroom. I could tell that the bathroom door was closed. I was terrified. I don't know why, but I was. I felt a presence coming from that room and I ran upstairs. I stayed at the top of my stairs and in my room for about 20 minutes and I couldn't hear a thing downstairs. I can tell if there's anyone downstairs just by noise, but I heard nothing. So I walk back downstairs and the door is open. There are lights off. Nothing's in the sink. There's no sign of water running and nobody is downstairs or in the kitchen. There are no dishes that had been touched. The only explanation I can think of is that when my mom does the dishes, I can hear her from that exact spot just outside the bathroom door. So it might have been my memory playing tricks on me. I know I mentioned this a lot, but maybe it's just a wrinkle in time. (laughs) Uh, Not the book wrinkle in time, but you know what I mean. I've talked about this like a ripple through history. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, sorry, it's a long one. Everyone says that, but I think I live up to that saying. Love the pod. It is so perfect. Hope you enjoyed your well-deserved break. Gonna miss pasta time, but excited for what comes next. Thank you for reading. I'm writing this on my phone at way too late a time. So hopefully after proofreading, this will sound okay and somewhat polished. Love you guys. Keep on creeping on. Also, completely fine to read on the podcast. Thank you uh, for sharing with us for the story time, Lewis. We appreciate it. Yeah, that was really, really good. Thank you for sharing that. 
it uh it feels really nice to have someone call it a perfect podcast um i think it's appropriate that they're like i'm writing this on my phone way too late and we're reading this way too late yeah it matched up (laughs) really well we're not a perfect podcast but i'm happy that our content matches what you're looking for because we really wanted to make something that we wanted to listen to and that's what it really came down to and uh, this exact kind of story is like what we're here for. Like, it's super awesome. So thank you to writing uh, and sending that in. And hopefully you don't see any two headed snakes uh, in the future. Uh, I, the first thing I thought that was going to come of it was like the symbol for like medicine, how it's like two snakes wrapped around like a stripper pole or whatever it is. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but I thought it was going to come back around to that. So, you know, maybe <laughs> that'll work into it at some point. But um, oh, yeah, I forgot that the, the medical uh, symbol. symbol is like. The snake. I'm sure uh, Faye can tell us <laughs> what that means. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've heard it before, but it's definitely not stuck in my brain. But either way, Lewis, thank you so much for sending that in. And sorry for the detour yeah. uh, and the tangent during your story. So before we move into our next story, we are going to take a really quick commercial break. And we're back. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into the third story of the show. And this one's subject is, you can read on the pod. And also, just want to point out, if you're going to send in an email, please let us know if we're allowed to read it or if it's just something you're sending to us. And that's the perfect place to put it is in your subject line. It starts out like this. Hi, Adam and Robin. Hello, that's us. Hi. That's Adam. I'm Robin. Wait, have we already covered this? I think a couple of times. That's okay. I'm <laughs> glad we did reintroductions. Email goes on to say, so I've been meaning to send you my story for so long and listening to the most recent story time episode, you guys said that your running low on stories has galvanized me into writing to you. First of all, I'd like to say how much I love the pod. You guys really do feel like your actual friends after listening to you for so long. And I really do appreciate you both being in my life. It's definitely better for it. Well, thank you so oh, much. Thank you. And we feel that way too, even though we haven't listened, we haven't met the people that listen to us. It's like you are our friends because you listen to us and that means the world to us. I, you know what? There's so many people that we've met through this podcast that I genuinely consider friends. You, like, you guys might not consider us friends, <laughs> but like, uh, like Faye and Glitch and so many of you folks that we've met through this pod, you guys are like legitimately our friends. Yeah, 100%. I met Robin through this pod. It was crazy. Like, Shut up. You're so stupid. I, I just, it still blows my mind that Sam and Andrew met through this podcast. Like my heart, I can't even. I think their love guys. was destined to come together at some point, And it was just like the vehicle of scary-ish is what connected them. And we were just lucky enough to be the thing that we can say like they met through our show. Like, nah, And nah, nah. we were lucky enough to see Andrew wrestle. If you guys. fucking uh, awesome. It was really cool to go to that wrestling show. 10 out of 10 would do it again. Uh, you guys should check out his page. Yeah. 100%. Wrestling. All right, I'm going to get back to this email. It goes on to say, anyway, because everyone knows, everyone knows we're going to go on a tangent. Anyway, to my story. (laughs) My name is Jenny, and I live in Sheffield in the UK. I haven't always lived in Sheffield, though. I grew up in Hull, and the majority of my family is still there with a few exceptions. During my last stint living in Hull from 2005 to 2013, my mom, Carol, was sadly diagnosed with stage 4 bowel cancer, and given 18 to 20 months to live and booked in for treatment. She was only 60 years old. As I'm sure you can imagine, myself, my sister, whose name is Sue, and brother, whose name is Steve, were devastated. Strangely, however, the diagnosis actually gave my mom a new lease on life. She had been struggling with depression for a number of years, but with this change in her physical health, her mental health improved dramatically, and Sue, Steve, and I got our fun, loving, and fantastic mom back. Aww. She decided that as she did not have that long left, she would do some of the things that she wished she had done when she was younger. She had her first She's like YOLO. <laughs> she Let's had her it. first tattoo done by my regular tattooist. Nice. Uh, and also had some funky colors put in her hair, purple and silver. And with the voucher she was gifted upon leaving work, booked a family holiday for us all at the Grand Hotel in Scarborough at her birthday the following year. That is so cool. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's sad that it had to come under those circumstances. But sometimes, like, that you do what you got to do if you know, you know, yeah, I, you only have X amount of time. I left. read a short story in college called Being in Love with My Diagnosis, and it was about someone who, like, got the wake-up call they didn't expect to get when they were like 35 and it was it was from terminal cancer as well um and they decided they're going to go out and like basically live their life um and then they got better and they realized like cancer saved their life as much as it almost took their life so uh i think it's something that's 
not I wouldn't say common, but it's awesome to hear when this is like the galvanizing effect that it has. Um, but all right, I'll get back to the story. The holiday was very much a bright point in the midst of the darkness, and we all had a great time and formed some lasting memories that I am sure we all cherish. The chemotherapy was particularly hard on her, but she battled through and stayed strong. However, eventually the time came that we were all dreading. The consultant said that the chemo was no longer working and it was time to stop. From then on, it was just a case of pain management and waiting. It was devastating again. She stayed at home for as long as she was comfortable, and after a while, we arranged for her to have some respite and pain management at the local hospice. She had told us that she wanted to be at home when the time came, so while she was in the hospice, we arranged for all of the equipment needed for this to happen to be installed in her home. My sister and I made everything right for her to return and waited on the doorstep, giddy like a pair of kids as the paramedics brought her from the ambulance across the house. Unfortunately, it turned out to be just not viable having her at home, though. Neither my sister or I were equipped with the necessary skills, and it made more sense for her to return to the hospice. She initially shared a room with a couple of other women, both very pleasant, and we would involve them in our conversations during our visits. As mom's illness progressed and the time drew nearer, the wonderful staff at the hospice moved mom's roommates out so that we had privacy in our last moments with her. My sister and I had the phone call in the morning to tell us that the nurses thought that the time was close and that we should get there as soon as we could, and when we arrived, we bumped into one of mom's previous roommates as we made our way around to see mom. The lady stopped us and told us that mom had scared the shit out of her. She went on to tell (laughs) us that during a conversation before she was moved out of the room, mom had admitted that she knew she was going to die soon, but she wasn't frightened as she knew she was not going alone. She then told the lady she was going with her. Oh, no. We were all horrified that mom had said this and apologized profusely for her fright, but also found it hilarious that mom would come out with something like that. And it brings a smile to my face thinking back on it. Mom passed away peacefully on December 21st, 2012, just as my brother's train pulled into Hull train station. It was almost like she had waited until he was in the city before letting go. My sister and I were there with her, as were her own sisters. Yes, she passed away on the 21st of December, 2012, the day the world was supposed to end. And as I said to my sister at the time, the world did not come to an end, but ours did it was a tough time and being so close to christmas you would think that that would have ruined christmas for us especially that year and whilst the ones since have been a hit have been hit or miss that first one was actually really good we got to spend time together us three kids and our respective partners which we had not been able to do for a number of years and we also spent time with our dad too which was lovely as while we have all spent time with dad individually we had not spent time with him and each other since we were children And now to the reason why I'm writing this. The first night after my mom passed away, we had been watching some WWE to take my mind off of things, which I think is awesome because we just got them talking about how Sam, or excuse me, how Sam and Andrew met and how Andrew wrestles. Um, There is nothing quite like some mindless violence to make a girl feel better. Eventually, I needed to get some sleep, but every time I closed my eyes and tried to drift off, I would see her and start crying. It was so hard. Understandably, I was absolutely beside myself and just didn't know what to do. This is like trauma time 2.0. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's I'm happy people send this stuff to us because like, this is something people go through, you know, and I'm happy to read it, even though it's definitely sharing someone else's trauma. Um, all right. Let me, let me start this over. Un- understandably, I was absolutely beside myself and just didn't know what to do, where to put myself or anything, and then I was overcome with a feeling of complete and utter peacefulness. I felt my hand be taken in someone else's hand. Not my husband, though, as he was on my right-hand side and there was no one else in the room. It was like my mom was there telling me that she was okay and that I should sleep, and sleep I did. It only happened that once, when I really needed it. I do sometimes feel her near. I have earworms that make me say, all right, mom, enough. They're usually the church songs or hymns from my childhood, rather than something more my taste like Aerosmith or Volbeat, but she's never held my hand like that again. That is a bunch of bands that I don't listen to. <laughs> I've listened to a, a lot of Aerosmith, so... I, I mean, just that's know that one, one that from uh, Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate I you so much. I don't want to close my eyes. This year will be the 10th anniversary of her passing, and I can't quite get my head around how long it's been. In some respects, it still feels so recent. I miss her every day, and some days more than others... But I have my friends and family supporting me, and I'll get through it. 
I've attached a few pictures of my mom so you can see her beautiful face and how cool she was. Aww. Anyways, thanks again for the pod. I appreciate how much work there is that goes into what you do. You guys rock. Much love, Jenny. You know what? You guys rock. You guys did yeah. so much for your mom, and I'm glad you guys got to spend all that extra time with her while you could. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for sending pictures and sharing these wonderful memories and honestly sharing the not wonderful memories. Like, I this is stupid to say, and I know it's a hard thing to compare, but like we we literally just got done recording the episode about losing our dog. Which is uh, coincidentally to cancer. <laughs> Yeah, and I I mentioned uh, to Robin during the recording, I just said this on the live stream, but not when we were recording, but I said to Robin, like, I think we got like 80% of the way through the episode. I was just like, I don't know why I'm telling this story on the show. (laughs) Like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And she was just like, you know, if this is helpful, like this show is not just about like true crime and it's not just about like scary things. Like it's about stuff like this. I mean, Um, as evidence in our... um you know, first responder episode with JT and 911 girl, it's the things that scared them most wasn't the crime aspect. It was real life, personal things that scared them most. And I think that's really important to note. Yeah, 100%. And I would also like to thank you uh, for sending in these pictures because they're absolutely awesome there's one of her in a leather jacket there's one of her getting tattooed there's one of her in a pink wig um and there's one of her head shaved and she just looks like such a awesome badass and i I really appreciate you sharing that with us and there's people that have reached out to us that are in the spooky friends community too that have had their own battles with cancer they have family members that have battled cancer so um you know hearing stuff like this is very helpful um i'm not sure if there's any like cancer survivors or just cancel cope uh like session podcasts out there but i would definitely be interested in like hearing some of that stuff like if the cancer podcast doesn't actually exist like i think it definitely needs to because there's certain things that like support groups exist for that people have a really hard time accessing and i think that's the sort of content that would be helpful and that's why i'm always been like very supportive of like people sending us stuff and that's like mental health related or stuff specifically that's like physical health like draining because it directly affects your mental health as well right so Thank you for sharing that with us, and uh, I appreciate you. So Okay, so this final story of the episode uh, begins... Oh, it's from Bella, and it begins. You guys said you needed more stories. So here in all caps, you all caps, go all caps. Here we go. Hi, Robin I love Adam. that the common theme for these stories tonight like, have been hey, people you guys said you didn't have call. stories, here's some stories. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. And to everyone listening right now, we need more stories. Yeah. Send mm-hmm. us more stories. Uh, it says, hi, Rob and Adam and Spooky Mom. Hello, that's us. We're the three musketeers. My name is Bella. <laughs> <laughs> My name is... <laughs> Shit. My name is Bella, and I have been a longtime listener for a few years now. I came across your podcast when I wanted to switch up just listening to music on my drives, and I am so happy I did. You guys do such a wonderful job at what you do, so please keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for tooting our horn. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Now, I have a couple spooky haunts to tell you about my new home that my fiancé and I just moved into in September. The house is from 1920 and a complete fixer-upper, FYI. The first story is when I was in the empty house, alone. Yes, of course, because why wouldn't it be while I was alone? And I was painting the ceiling of our front bedroom. My fiancé had to stop at work before coming to help me, but I was expecting him to come to the house. I had my music on low so I could hear my surroundings, and the bedroom door closed because I'm a scaredy cat. I was minding my business when I heard footsteps across our living room, echoing because the house was empty, and a muffled, honey, I'm home. I called out to my fiancé saying, babe, is that you? But got no reply. Then I called out again, and nothing. My phone was across the room, but I wanted to go get it as fast as I could, so I darted to the phone, paused the music, and pushed full force against the door. There was no handle on the door, so I was especially afraid someone would come busting through. I called my fiancé and my dad, both rushed over to find nothing there and no signs of anyone coming through. Moving on to the next one. Well, that was quick. Uh, Moving on to the next one, I was sleeping on the couch in my living room while my fiancé was playing games in the bedroom, and I turned off the TV and lights to fall asleep. At 1 a.m., I wake up to the TV blaring loud and all the lights on. I asked my fiancé the next day to see if he turned on either, and he said no, and just tried to go back to sleep after that. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, I that is one of the things that scares me most is when the TV turns on. I don't think they do that anymore. But back in the day, sometimes your TV, if you had a blackout or something and your TV turned back on, it would turn back on at full so volume. Yeah. And it was just one of the most terrifying things to experience. Um, technology these days, I think, prevents that. But definitely back in the day, it was horrifying. Such a bizarre um, thing to think. Like, the old way of building a TV meant if the power was cut and then turned back on in a very specific way, it would put the volume at max level. Yeah. Like, it makes no sense. But it, it was totally true. It had to be true. some type of programming in there that did that. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. It's weird. I don't know how to technology. <laughs> I'm getting to that age where this new generation, I'm like, flip phones where the screen creases down the middle. You're crazy, young'uns. I mean, um, that's not that crazy. I looked into getting that stupid flip phone, and then I saw the one that was on display that had just been open and closed for like two months. It looks like shit. It looked like shit. It had the line in the middle of it. I was like, Sorry, I love Samsung, the idea, just but no. <laughs> Jesus, Louise. Um, anyway, my final story is personally the most terrifying to me. Also, because it happened recently, I was sound asleep in bed when I woke up to a door opening and shutting. The way our bedroom is, uh, you can see the hallway from the bed and the bathroom door is in said hallway. We leave our door open so our doggos can come in and out as she pleases. Did I say doggos? Multiple? There's only one doggo here. You said doggo. Okay. The door to the bathroom opened and shut three times. I could distinctly hear it creak and see it in the reflection of our hallway mirror. My dog soon after came in from the living room to lay down with us. When I checked the time, it was 3.50 a.m., which freaks me out because of the witching hour and all that. I went back to bed eventually and tried to forget about it, but that shit lives in my head rent-free majority <laughs> of the time. I'm sorry this is long, but this is some of my stories I wanted to share. I have more stories from my dad and grandma that I will have to send in when I get the chance. Thanks so much. Keep on creeping on. Thank you so much, Bella, for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, I think I would love to hear those stories from your dad and your grandma. I, I think uh, the older generations, a lot of them have stories that they have experienced, like things that they have experienced. So the older generation doesn't just have stories. They've forgotten the lame stories. They just have the good shit left. So 100% get those <laughs> No, stories. that's so sad when you say it that way. They're so old. They've forgotten the shitty stories. I didn't say stories. it like that, but that's, yeah, what I'm saying. <laughs> but, like, they've, you know, they've parsed down the things that could have, like, been, you know, edited out and forgotten. It just rem reminds me of that uh, Rick and Morty episode where Rick is just like, yeah, let's just do a little snip snip. <laughs> <laughs> just going to do a little edit. <laughs> uh anyway uh thank you so much bella for sharing your story we look forward to getting those other ones that you have to share indeed and uh i'm not sure what the weather is like near you right now but because your name has triggered this memory in my head i do have to ask how you liking the rain girl if you guys don't know what that's from well no let's say this then you haven't had robin torture you by making <laughs> you watch fucking twilight a million times damn it babe no i was gonna say if you can tell us where that line is from then i would be like Send us where it's from, and I will give you a sticker. But it's too fucking late. Adam ruined it, so no, just no one gets stickers. Tell us. You don't have to send everyone fucking stickers, okay? You could just tell us, like, I knew where it was from before Adam said it. So we'll believe you. Either way, thank you so much, Bella, for sending that in. All right, so that is everything that we have for this episode of Storytime. Thank you to everyone who wrote us your stories. We sincerely appreciate it. If you've been sitting on a story and you've been like, I'm going to send it to him one of these days, make today Now's the time. That day. Now's the time. If you have a friend with a story, tell them to send it or tell yeah, them you're going to steal story. their story. Send it yourself. Bruh. Take credit for it because we need stories and uh, we would love for you to send them. But yeah, like Robin said, and I talked over her, uh, family stories are also something that's like kind of a bonding experience. You can actually go to someone and be like, hey, do you have any stories like this? And then they might tell you some creepy shit. So either way, if you have a story you would like to send, please email storytime at scarish.com or go to our website, scarish.com. Click on contact us, fill out that form. It comes directly to us or hit us up on our social medias. Facebook is facebook.com slash scarish podcast. Twitter is at scarish pod and Instagram is at scarish podcast. Robin, for folks who would like to donate to us, how can they do so? Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash scarish podcast. Those are monthly donations. Tiers start at a dollar. I think I'm going to try and put up a poll um, this week to kind of have the choose your adventure to your people and up help us choose this next uh next week's topics 
um, because we have put one out, one of those out in a while, and I think you folks deserve it. Um, so help us choose something, you know. And uh, you can also go to coffeeko-fi.com slash scariest podcast, and those are one-time donations. And really, all your donations go to helping us keep the show going and kind of keep us motivated um, to make more stuff because uh, it's hard. It's time-consuming, but we love making it, and uh, we hope you guys love it too. Love it enough to help us out. <laughs> love it, live it, laugh it, love it. Um, but yeah, live, thank laugh, you so love. much to everyone who supports us, uh, whether it's, oh, wait, you know, pray love? Shit. I hate you so much to everyone who supports <laughs> us, whether it's through just listening to the show, sharing it with your friends or monetarily, it means the world to us. And, uh, we really wouldn't be here without you. So that is everything for this episode of story time. Robin, why don't you go ahead and sign us out? Keep on creeping on and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye.